Are you ready? I'm good. Phones on silence. Yeah. Um. Good morning, Lagos. Good morning. You're welcome to Spotlight on Yava Tech Radio 89.3 FM. My name is Comfort Wahoye, and I'll be here today from now all the way <laughs> to 12 noon. You're welcome to the show this beautiful Wednesday morning. <laughs> Okay, so today on the show we are talking architecture, mm, understanding the business of architecture. That's what we're talking about today on the show. Remember, at 11.30 a.m., you can call in to be part of the show if you want to participate in our you know, spelling bee segment. Our spelling bee segment is from 11.30 to 11.45 a.m., whereby you just call in, try to spell some words. Your ability to spell three or five words correctly qualifies you to win airtime on the show so for now let's get to meet our guest who are we talking to today so my guest is the founder of Elak designs a nigerian based design and build firm Elak designs not only propels aesthetically appealing buildings from simple structures to complete design solutions the outfit also engages in dynamic disruptive and innovative thinking to come up with its flawlessly curated designs Part of their goal is to redefine problems in human-centric ways, resulting in strategic, practical, and solution-focused design concepts. My guest is also a photographer. Um, this is at home. I have with me in the studio, Akfuse Nebedi. Good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning, Comfort. Thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome to the show. So we're talking architecture today, understanding the business of architecture. So at any point, if you have questions for my guest or you've worked with him, feel free to call the phone lines 70 So should you have questions, should you want to make a comment about what we're talking about today, feel free to call the phone lines. I'll take them again, 70 Those are the numbers to call. So let, let me take you back to maybe when you were 10 years old. Oh, okay. You know, <laughs> you know what was it? What, was there any particular profession you were attracted to at that age? Uh, to be very honest, um, that's a long time ago. I don't really yeah. remember. <laughs> <laughs> don't okay, really what, remember what, what can you remember? What age can you remember? Uh, to be very honest, I remember a lot, yes. Okay. But to see, um, at that point, um, I was a child of just playing a lot and mm. being what young boys do. Okay. Know? So, um, actually, I was drawing a lot. I used mm. to draw a lot. As a kid, I've been drawing since I was um, three or four years old. Okay. So, um, architecture sort of chose me because just for the fact that I was drawing cartoon characters, mm. drawing um, regular stuff that kids draw. Okay. I still ended up always drawing houses. When I'm going out, um, I see houses. I just used to pay so much attention to houses, mm. and um, I don't know the love for um, houses has just been there. So when the right time came to you know, choose a career path and all, it just seemed like architecture was more or less the only option to be very honest <laughs> the only option. i'm not even joking there wasn't a thought of uh, maybe i should be a doctor mm. or nah none of that it was just architecture or nothing architecture or nothing i, I won't even lie to you that's that's so why it felt no, like there was no, option no plan b if this doesn't work i will do this it there was, was no plan b so if you had failed jam mm -hmm. you would have sat probably gave you something else you i will be it. very very honest with you it actually happened no no jokes i got that. i got building i got admitted into one of the nigerian universities um for building technology mm. and i didn't take it so wow. my, I, I always um shout out to my dad for that actually because mm. he was on like you know what you've been doing this drawing housing building technology what what are you doing really mm. just go for your architecture when you're done you'll be called an architect when we are done with building technology what what, what are you exactly so, <laughs> you know so it just felt that way and you know, um, yeah. at the end of it all, I waited at home. I think another year, yeah. and I, I got admitted to university. So, so it, it's okay to say that you were attracted to architecture because of the fact that you started drawing from an earlier age. How were uh, you drawing? That's right. Like I was drawing cartoons, drawing random stuff, cars, but I drew houses a lot, hmm. a whole lot. I mean, like a whole lot, just drawing random. Like it was not like I was replicating houses I was seeing. Hmm. I was drawing what I felt houses looked like in my head. Wow. And to be honest, I still have most of those drawings now. You should showcase them one of I, I would. I actually should. <laughs> because but, but, when, now but, when I look at them, um, I wasn't drawing the plan, the, the section or the elevation. I was mm. drawing something. When you see, you know that this child is drawing a house. Mm. 
but it was neither planned nor 3D. What, you know. what, what, what is it about architecture that you felt you couldn't get from any other career path? To be honest, I would say there's a deep sense of satisfaction, of fulfillment. So it's a, it's a case of, now, this building we're in, for example, mm. um, let me assume it's 30 years old, for example. Okay. So which means 30 years ago, it was empty land, mm. probably wasteland, just grass, bush, or something. Mm. But today, people can live in it. So that's the satisfaction that this wasn't here before. You are literally creating something out of nothing. Mm. That's just... For me, that's ultimate satisfaction. Mm. But the back end would be, okay, going through the process of trying to, I mean, it's easy to say, oh, this building is nice, this and that and that. But mm. there was a lot that went into crafting and creating this to make it what it is today. Okay. So, yeah, all that that whole thing from beginning mm. all the way to yeah. the end is the ultimate satisfaction for me. Interesting. So, what's yeah. the relationship between art and architecture? Huh. Can, can I, must I know how to draw before I become an architect, or is something I can learn? You know? Um. Okay. Now, it's actually fundamental that you should know how to draw because in some cases you want to explain things to people, hmm. maybe like a client, for example. You need to sketch because you just can't use words to actually explain some things. So you need to sketch. So yeah, it's necessary that you need to know how to draw. But art is not just about drawing. Okay. Okay. So art is more like um. Art's an expression. Mm. So the relationship between art and architecture is, architecture literally is the art and science of design. So art is that expression. So you want to say, okay, you want to express yourself some type of way this building mm. such that this person can tell that when you walk in, maybe you feel this type of way, you have these colors or your lighting, you play with stuff. Mm. That's expression. But architecture goes beyond that. As a science to you that you know that okay you want this to work this type of way because case in point say this table mm -hmm. it has four legs mm -hmm. right the science of it is why it has four legs you know you can have yeah. this table with one leg mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. maybe stable mm -hmm. there's a science that goes into how you make it stable. stable it can actually work on one leg but there's a science that goes to it so yeah that's how the relationship between arts and architecture come into play mm -hmm. and of course this table could this curved end, end mustn't be here there's a reason why the person that designed this probably made a curve mm -hmm, and yeah. can be an expression. So that's the art part of it. I don't know if you see where I'm coming yes, from. Yes, yes, yeah, that's pretty it. much it. I get it. So yeah. do you consider yourself as an artist? Yes, I do. <laughs> I actually no beyond um being an architect, I actually do a lot of art like paint, create stuff. Mm. That's just who I've been. So okay. yeah. So would you say your art inspires your architectural designs and vice versa? Um and, or which comes first? Yeah, I was going to answer that way. Architecture <laughs> has been my first love. I always I keep claiming architecture is just secondary, but actually it's primary for me. Hmm. Every other thing I've done, architecture is just always there. So um, when I want to do any other thing, art, photography, anything I want to do, hmm. you will still see the sense of architecture because I'm always looking for my fine lines. I like symmetry. I like balance. So mm -hmm. when I'm trying to take a picture, I'm either trying to get this perfectly this way, mm -hmm. get ensure this line is this way. Even in, my, um, in expressing myself through my art, I always want... If I'm going to have a line, it has to be straight. Mm -hmm. If it's going to be slant, let it be slant. Let us know it is. It's not slant. like it was supposed <laughs> to be straight and it's looking. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It has to be what it is. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so architecture always influences my art. But does my art influence my architecture? Uh, I, I'm, I'm saying I'm not there yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so tell us, what is architecture? Give us a definition that a six-year-old can understand. Okay, so architecture, like I said earlier, is art and science of design so the art part is just um, expressing yourself but the science part is the practicality of utilizing what you are designing for so um, there's a saying that goes um, um, form follows function mm. what that means is um, so because we're in a radio station does not mean you should design this building to look like a radio mm. if you do that and your building is not functional have you achieved what you're going to do? You haven't. You're just trying to make a radio station look like a radio. radio station, yeah. It doesn't make sense, hmm. you know. So that's pretty much what um, architecture is for hmm. me. It's the art and science hmm. of design. You have to ensure that whatever you're designing, hmm. the function is key. So that whoever the end user is, is able to appreciate and use that space effectively. If you don't do that, then it's hmm. pointless. Okay, so we all know architecture is more than just having a visually pleasing image what mm -hmm. would you consider a good design 
and what does have what does one have to look out for to judge if a design is good or crappy? Hmm. Well, to say a bad design is just pretty much what I said. If you haven't um no achieved, if you, yeah, of it. if you haven't achieved what you're trying to achieve, mm. that's the main function. Mm. Say this um this studio for example, if you if it's not serving the function of being soundproof, mm. aesthetically pleasing, then it is not a functional design, it is a bad design. Okay. Now, if it has a window or doesn't have a window, mm. it's a different conversation. Okay. Right? Because it's a studio. You might have a studio without a window. But if you have a studio with a window, perhaps there isn't soundproof glass or mm-hmm. some mm-hmm. form of insulation, mm-hmm. it works. So um, it's about it being optimal and functional for what it is. So that's what I consider a bad design. Now, mm. whether it's ugly or fine is a different conversation. And yeah. that's like the, um, the art part, expressing mm-hmm. yourself. You can have an ugly studio that is actually functional. But the truth is when you enter and you are using it optimally, you would forget that it's ugly. Mm-hmm. Because it's doing what it's supposed to I do. It's almost like it. a car. Mm-hmm. So your car is supposed to take you from point A to point B. <laughs> the moment it can't take you. The moment it can't take you, it defeats the purpose of being mm-hmm. a car to yeah. you. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Whether it's mm-hmm. ugly or fine, or whether it has AC or not, it's a different <laughs> conversation. Do you understand that point? But it doesn't take you from point A mm-hmm. to point B. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much what I consider a bad design. Okay, so are there different areas of specialization in the architectural space? Or different areas of what, sorry? Set? Different areas of specialization, or is okay. it a one size fits all kind of um, career? Oh, definitely one size fits all. Okay, um, tell us about the other aspects of Okay, it. so there are different um, aspects of, it, of aspects of architecture. There's um, commercial, the main ones, commercial, residential, landscape, um, interior. Those are the main ones. There are other ones, industrial so and the rest. So you have different professionals for each of these categories? Yes, but as a well-trained architect, you have the knowledge of all of these. Okay. Now, there's specialization. There's some people that just do interior only. Mm-hmm. That's what they want to do. So um, there are people that also do landscape only. And landscape refers to the immediate environment on the outside. Mm-hmm. You have your grass, your shrubs, yeah, your yeah. Um, all that stuff, hardscape, mm-hmm. um, water, all of that. Yeah. So you can decide to narrow down and specialize in those aspects. So those are the different um, um, parts of architecture. Okay, so how much time does it take to get a design ready from start to finish? <laughs> and does the job of an architect, you know, does it end in designs or is the architect, architect actually part of the actual building? That means, is the architect supposed to be on ground while the building is being erected? Mm. Okay, let me take the first one. Yeah. There's no fixed time. Your brief will determine it. Mm. Say, for example, if you ask me to design a gatehouse and you ask me to design this st- six-story building, mm. it definitely can't be the same time frame. Yeah. So your time is um, largely based on what the brief is, what you're trying to design. Okay. okay? Mm. Even if it's a gatehouse, how big is this gatehouse? Mm. What's, what and what has the client requested? So time comes with all those things, the number of things you're trying to do mm-hmm. or achieve with that design. So um, that's... Um, on design. The second part of the question was what again? Are you supposed to be on ground from start to finish? Oh yeah, you, you need, you need, a, you definitely need to get through the process of the building because mm. the architect is the visionary behind it. So, mm. from the scratch, once you are getting it wrong, you already know. Mm. You get, and that is how the architect will inform the client thusly and, um, yeah, ensure that the building is built according to specification mm. and the design. Okay. Um, listeners at home, if you have questions, you want to make a comment, please feel free to call the phone lines 0708 Those are the numbers to call. Feel free to part of the show. If you have questions for my architect here, and uh, you want to make a comment, feel free to call any of the phone lines. And remember, you can join us online. You can join us at um, Yabatech Radio, um, dot com. Just Google and you'll get the um, link to listen online. I'm also live on Facebook as well. You can join me, Comfort Wahoye, and then you can see my guest and see all of us in the studio. Now, is it difficult to actually convince Nigerians Mm -hmm. who want to build that they need architects? Because sometimes you hear things like, is it not just pencil and paper? Why should I employ someone to do this for me? You hear that a lot. You know, so how how easy or how difficult is it to convince Nigerians to actually pay you Mm -hmm. or get an architect to do this job for them? Okay, um, I would like to say that I have been fortunate because I've actually had a lot of stories. Mm. Excuse me. Okay. I've actually had a lot. Excuse me. Mm. I've had a lot of stories about how people um, claim they don't need architects. The truth is, you always need an architect. Okay. 
you might think oh because i'm just building a three bedroom flat mm. or rather three bedroom bungalow i don't need or i have done this architects put in a lot of work to ensure that that house is what it is mm. um in lagos today you see a lot of houses and i I, I really hate this. I really, really hate this because we, we get a lot on social media. People keep mm-hmm. saying, if you go to Lekki, all the houses are copy and paste, copy mm-hmm. and paste. Mm-hmm. The truth is, if you go to the back end and you find out, those houses were probably not designed by proper architects. Mm-hmm. They probably were not. So I don't see why architects keep getting bashed. But in terms of convincing, um, I've been lucky and fortunate enough to have clients that are um, that know what they, they want. And... Um, I guess in meeting and talking to them. Do you think them, this has to do with being learned or not? I would I would choose to believe that that should play a role. Mm. Um, unfortunately, I'm not unlearned, so I don't know how to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to um, speak from that angle. Mm-hmm, I'll speak mm-hmm. from my own angle, and I think it um, plays a major role. So speaking to my clients and explaining to them the need for an architect and why you need to get these things done, mm. get these things right, and how at the end of the if you don't. You would always get burnt. You would always get burnt. I mean, I was looking at a house somewhere. I saw a picture online, and um, the guest, the visitors' toilet in the in the living room, mm. had its window open into the living room. Oh goodness! <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. But I'm sure when the person was, whoever designed it, mm. the draftsman or whoever mm. designed it, would have just been there, like, eh, don't worry, it would be nice. It would be nice. And maybe the, the um, the owner. Did not even read and understand the drawings mm-hmm. thoroughly mm-hmm. because um that's another thing i've gotten to understand in my line of work sometimes even after you've done the design you've shown them the drawings the plans and all they Complain don't have it. yeah they don't have a thorough understanding, understanding. of spaces mm. and dimensions mm. so i actually go through that process of explaining thoroughly oh this is what one meter looks like this is like one meter so we're talking about 10 meters so it's like mm-hmm. 10 of this and they mm-hmm. realize ah okay okay ah, no, that's too small though so you now realize that the person looking at this thing on paper and realizing and thinking, oh, it should be good enough. But when mm. you explain verbally and use a scale, use something to just give yeah, them right. reference, they're mm. like, oh, no, 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 no. This is bigger than what I wanted. Mm-hmm. Or this is smaller than what I wanted. Mm. I, I choose to believe that um, whoever is not an architect would have just given the client of whoever drawings and just say, you know what, this is what I've done for a three bedroom. Then you get there and you realize that your master bedroom is a corridor. Mm. I, that reminds me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that reminds me of yeah. someone I know. Mm-hmm. You know his house. Mm-hmm. I think when they did the drawing, the mm-hmm. architectural design or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, they put the toilet at the entrance. Okay. So they use the toilet, like a visitor's toilet, mm-hmm. to block the entrance. There was no way to pass. It's like they're going to enter so the it's, toilet. It's a, it's, and do you understand? It's a no-brainer. <laughs> it's a no-brainer. So it's actually mm-hmm. crazy. And um, mm-hmm. in short, this is a very um, recent um, experience I had with a friend of mine, mm-hmm. where um, she was explaining that. Um, they went to, they were embarking on the project, and I don't think they got an architect because they were doing the soil test for the plots after they had started building, mm. and it seemed like the building was sinking. Is why they now realized that oh, I think we need to do soil test. And I'm like, mm. really at this stage, you guys should have just waited till you roofed the house before doing the soil <laughs> test. I mean, because you, I mean, if you've gone this far, why you know? Mm-hmm. So I mean, if you had an architect and other professionals, because in all honesty, architects do their work, but um, we cannot downplay the. Um, the works of the other um, consultants, exactly. the mechanical, mm-hmm. electrical engineers, Civil structural, and, all of that. Yeah. They are all very, very necessary to ensure that your building is built according okay. to specifications. So let's talk about getting people to pay you the right amount for mm-hmm. the kind of work that you do. Yeah. You know, it may be, di- may be a different story for you right now, but mm-hmm. let's take it back to when you started. How mm-hmm. was it to, was it difficult to get people to pay you your actual fee mm-hmm. for the job that you do, especially because people really do not place so much value on this mm-hmm. at, the, you know, at this part of yeah, the Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. you. Know. Mm-hmm. So how, how do you get them to pay you? I'll be very honest, I, it was a bit tough because it's like um, when you're new in any industry, mm-hmm. you're trying to prove a point. I mean, yeah. at Ella Designs, we're seven years now. Yeah, well, um, so, yeah, thank you. <laughs> We've come a long way. Yeah. So, I mean, the first few years, a matter of what have you done, you know, what mm-hmm. have you done? So you tell people, oh, I can do this, or you show them your work. And like, mm, okay, yeah, young person, yeah, mm-hmm. this, yeah, that, different, different stuff that people just don't have confidence in you. But over time, um, showing our competence and our diligence towards um, delivering what you want as mm-hmm. your home or your business place or whatever you want to do has shown that we are credible and um, we're able to deliver. So um, where we are now, 
we we just speak and um, people know the value we are we are we are offering and um, yeah people pay. Okay, so I know you mentioned some of them, but but let's talk about it. Let's talk mm-hmm. about some other risk. What are mm-hmm. the other risk of um, building without mm-hmm. having an architect on ground? Okay, you know that phrase. Um, if you fail to plan, you plan, plan to fail. To that fail. is just it. Yeah. To be honest, because you can't embark on a journey and not know what your budget is, not know where you're going. It, mm. It's like saying you want to travel and you're just heading to the airport. Where are you traveling to? Do you have a visa? Have you gotten a ticket? Mm. Do you know what airline you're taking? All these questions are they're almost endless. Mm. That's what it is, literally. So you, you have this plot of land and you're like, okay, you know what? I want to build a 16-bedroom house on it. Let's start building. Can the plot take a 16-bedroom mm-hmm. house? Mm-hmm. Is it a 16 bedroom bungalow? Is it a 16 bedroom duplex? How do you want these rooms to be? So, I mean, not having an architect and just embarking on whatever project is as ridiculous as that sounds. Mm. You just get up and, like, even, let's you're, do it. yeah, let's just do it. <laughs> you're going, even in Lagos, you're going to, you're going out. You usually either check traffic mm. or you have to plan. You just can't embark on. Then not like when you mentioned mm-hmm. Lagos, what, what do you think about the, the houses you see? Sometimes I'll turn land that mm-hmm. you're seeing some houses on the island, mm-hmm. how choked they are. I think I'm the worst person you should. I think I'm you the worst person you should ask this question. Hold but, on. Yeah. Calm down. I'm coming down. <laughs> <laughs> is it how choked they are? Yeah. Do you think, is, it, is it as a result of something the architect did not do or did? Mm-hmm. Does it have to do with it? Does it in any way? So I know who to hold responsible. Good. When I'm looking at like is that architect is the one. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to. I'm really going to go off for a bit. Okay. You know, I had mentioned that um before you even brought this question. I said in Lagos, they say all these houses are copy and paste. They mm-hmm. all look alike. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's simple. Developers are taking over the industry. That's the truth. And a lot of developers don't engage professionals. They can probably engage architecture students or engage a draftsman. Or, in some cases, they've engaged an architect to actually do one design. Okay. And they take that design and I replicate it over, mm. rinse it, dry it, <laughs> wash it over and over and over and over, mm. right? Mm. And um, a lot of agencies, um, government agencies, the building agencies, I think they overlook a lot of things, a whole lot of things. Mm. I'll mm. tell you personally, um, and anybody can take me on this, there's somewhere in um, Ikate I went to, there's a block of... Um, um 30 16 flats sorry okay. yeah four no, yeah yeah about 16 flats and mm-hmm. they have one just one stairwell and it's on three three or four floors wow. so what that means is minus the risk of um having that number of um people mm-hmm. in one building mm-hmm. right you are you live in one of the flats i live in one of the flats mm-hmm. i'm going to walk in my nice suit and tie and whatever and you are taking out your trash at that point in time. You will pass each other on the road. Smelling stuff and fresh guy or whatever it is. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. even on the playful side. The yeah, reality yeah. of it is if there's a fire outbreak. Exactly, there's just one. How do you want people to survive? Mm-hmm, that building mm-hmm. is standing in Ikate today. I can take you there. Mm-hmm. And we have building agencies that are supposed to regulate these things. Mm-hmm. So... What's happening? I, I don't know. I really don't know. So, yeah, that's the question mark. So mm. when you see all these buildings, I say that side by side, or they don't mm. observe the setbacks. The truth is, I'm sure during the approval process, they go through. Oh, you must have so so meters a setback in front, so so meters a setback at the back. Mm-hmm. That is what was approved. What was built? Do you understand? Thing. It's a different thing. Mm. So there's that gap between um, the enforcers and what is being built. They just probably approve and they don't check mm. or do their due diligence to ensure that this thing is built according to specification. Mm. Yeah, so that's it. Interesting. We're still talking and we're standing the business of architecture with um, Akose Enebeli. Um, remember the phone lines are open if you have questions or you want to make a comment. If you are tired of these houses, you know, <laughs> call. The annoying part is a lot of people are actually tired okay. of these houses. Hold on, there's a call. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning, welcome to the show. What's your name? Hello. I can hear you. Good morning. What's your name? Your name is? Okay. You want to make a comment or you have a question for my guest? 
the line is actually breaking. Can I think you should just call me back. I'll I'll, I'll be on standby to take your call. Call me back. Change your location and call me back, please. Thank you. Okay, you have a question. I really, really <laughs> wanted to call back. 070 180173 You can try any of the lines and try and call me back. 070 These are the numbers to call. If you have any questions for the architect in the studio, feel free to call and I'll be here to take your call. But before my the last call, before he calls back, um, do you consider architecture a thriving, a thriving profession in Nigeria? It should be. It should be. <laughs> but I'm sorry like that. It's not. <laughs> no, it is. Okay, this is where I'm going. Okay. It is. Mm. But the issue we're having is the regulation, mm. right? Um, like I mentioned, developers have taken over the industry, and um, a lot of people. We just look at oh this developer has done this thing let me just take it mm. you get mm. there was a conversation on social media they went were complaining about kitchens that oh the kitchens actually have to be the way they are that people don't put thought into kitchens and i'm just there like you should find out these houses that you see in these kitchens find out if they were properly designed or if they were even designed by an architect oh. you know mm. and um i mean these are concerns i can only have with myself and my colleagues because there's no way i'll put it out there that look Mm. This thing you're calling is commercial stuff. They're just putting it. They're not yeah. considering, like I mentioned before, mm. they're just doing copy and paste. So, you design a house in Yaba, you consider all the environmental factors in designing it here, but you just carry that same house and put it in Lekki. Mm. You didn't consider the environmental factors and whatnot. Yeah. You are just dropping it there. Mm -hmm. Then mm. they will blame all architects. So yeah, it's definitely a profession I am very proud of. I am very very proud of. Um, I believe it's a good one. But if it would be a lot better if the um, the bodies involved mm. enforce and make things work. That way, people will be a lot um, happier with their conditions of living, mm -hmm. and um, I guess we'll have a better looking environment. Do, do you think there are enough people studying architecture, or do you think there are enough architects in the country who are working as architects? <sighs> You know, some people study architecture, but well, that, 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 let, let's take okay. this call. All right. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the show. What's your name? Chike, where are you calling me from? We are in Lagos. Okay, you have a question for my guest. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. All right, he, he will take your question now. Thank you for calling. Yeah. Okay, so Chiki wants to know what's the cost of design? How do you charge? Yeah, there's um, a standard scale of fees recommended by the Architects Reg Registration Council of Nigeria. Mm. It's usually 4.75% of the construction cost. 4.75% of the on, construction hold on, cost. Let's take call. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the show. What's your name? Tesla, where are you calling me from? All right, Jesslyn, you have a question? Yeah, I actually have two questions. Go ahead. One of the chat to the commenters, uh, actually, I'm currently at the uh, Lagos Youth Show Board. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see what. Okay. Thank you, thank you. My first question is, uh, I'm aware we lost a lot of uh, premium properties, right? But I'm curious to know what uh, you think is about architects providing services for those who technically can't afford it. We have a lot of uh, communities where people are still staying, like in Somalia. Okay, thank you so much for calling Teslin. He'll take your questions now. Okay, so okay. let's take questions. Yeah, I'll take the, the second okay. one. Right. 
I don't remember, I remember the first one. The second one is um, what we can do. It's simple. I think people just need to change their mindsets and engage professionals. That's what that second, that's my answer to, if we take the government out of it. Because every time people blame government, blame government, blame yeah. government, we should blame ourselves too sometimes. Yeah. You understand? When you have a serious, it's like saying you have a health condition yeah. and you just feel like, you know what, I can just stroll down to any pharmacy and just yeah. get vitamin C and I think I'll be okay. No. You speak to a doctor and say, well, I have a chest pain. You don't just take vitamin C for chest pain. Okay. Yeah, you speak to a professional. So mm -hmm. that's what should be applied. If people can change their mindset and no, not just believe that, look, I can't pay this person to just draw lines. Mm -hmm. It's just lines. It's, drawing. it's not drawing lines. This person has <laughs> gone to school for, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, let, yeah. Let's quickly take the first question. It's time for our, our spelling bee. Okay, all right. Okay. I can take the first for one. For those that can't afford the service, what can yeah. architects do? Volunteer. I, I'll say that architects should just take up on... Um, Areas that they feel like people can't afford the services, mm -hmm. architects can come together. You have the body of architects and say, you know what, let's just volunteer and you know, either give your service for free for this cause, you know, mm -hmm. and just for people and the society as a whole. Okay, let's let's quickly take this call. All Hello, right. good morning. Hello. Okay, so it's check check. It's ten eleven thirty two, and it's time for our spelling <laughs> this segment. So if you're very good at spelling words, I'll open the phone lines immediately after this break. Stick around. I'll be back. Am I People like our plastic already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Idea yeah. Yeah. lies in the user. I want another go. I can't take another go. Okay. Let's have the same thing. There is no passion to be found. Okay, that's fine. I'm settling for a life that's less. It kills me. I don't even like to. It actually kills me every time. I see, I see these um, comments online and stuff. And I know that if I just respond quickly with my fingers, it's just going to be. Yeah, yeah just venting basically. Mm -hmm. We need to address some fundamental issues. Okay, let's go back. This one is just me now. Let me have my phone. Let me put oh, it here, shit. please. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back for the spelling bee segment. You're welcome back. If you're just tuning in, this is still Spotlight on Yabatech Radio 89.3. I understand that some persons are trying to call and ask more questions here in the studio. But hold on, let's have our spelling bee segment at 11.45 a.m. We'll would continue with our interview with the architect. The architect is still in the house, so just count down, okay? <laughs> All right, so it's spelling bee segment, and you know how we do it. All you have to do is call in, attempt, um, spell five words correctly. But today... We're going to do three words. So if you're able to spell just three words correctly, you qualify to win airtime on the show. And if you're able to spell five words, you qualify to win a bigger amount of airtime on the show. The numbers to call 070-1800-173-091-3138410. Hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Welcome to the show. What's your name? My name is Joshua. where are you calling me from? Joshua from Abuja. How are you doing today? All right, are you ready to spell? Okay, let's do this. Joshua, are you ready? All right, Joshua, spell the word balloon. Oh, that's wrong. Balloon is spelled B A double L double O N. But thanks for calling, Joshua. <laughs> zero seven zero one eight zero zero one seven eight three zero nine one three one. Three eight four one one zero. Those are the numbers to call to be part of the spelling bee segment here today. If you're very good with spelling words, especially words that have double O, double L, double C, double A, I'm delighted. You know, feel free to call me up. All you have to do is spell three words correctly. You would win airtime, and your ability to spell five words correctly qualifies you as well for a bigger amount of airtime. So the numbers to call again: zero seven zero one eight zero zero one seven eight three zero nine one. Three one three eight four one one zero. Those are the numbers to call. So feel free to call and spell my words. Just spell three words correctly, and you would win airtime on the show. Your ability to spell five correctly qualifies you as well to win a bigger amount of airtime on the show. Zero seven zero one eight zero zero one seven eight three zero nine one three one three eight four one one zero. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Welcome to the show. What's your name? Uh, Kayade. Kayade, how are you doing today? Uh, very well, thank you. Where are you calling me from, Kayade? Uh, on the road right now. We're on the road now. Ah, uh, the place does not have name. 
Okay, all right. Kaida, are you ready to spell my words? All right, let's do this. Kaida, spell the word generally. That is correct. Spell the word caveat. That is correct. Spell the word asthma. Asthma. Yes. That is correct. Well done. Well done, Kyle. Spell the word dirge. Dirge. Not dojo. Dirge. That is correct. Well done. Question number the last number, or rather the last word. Are you ready? Yes. Spell the word garrulous. Garrulous. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, you missed one. It is G A double R U L O U S. Well, thank you so much, Kyle, for calling. Kyle, you still you're still gonna win airtime on the show because you you spelled four words correctly. Kyle, let me have your the four last digits of your number. Four two six zero. Four, two, six, zero. So, Kyle, please send your full number on WhatsApp to zero eight one three three zero three eight seven four nine. Did you get that? Zero eight one. Zero eight one double three zero three eight seven four nine. Okay. Zero three eight seven four nine. Okay. Thank you for calling. All right. So Kayade was able to spell four words correctly, so he has a time for today. If you also can spell, can you spell words correctly? Call me up zero seven zero one eight zero zero one seven eight three. Zero nine one three one three eight four one one zero. Those are the numbers to call. Feel free to call me and spell some words. Yeah, I believe to spell three correctly, you would qualify you to win airtime, or rather, you would win airtime on the show. But yeah, I believe to spell five words qualifies you to win a bigger amount of airtime. The numbers to call again: zero seven zero one eight zero zero one seven eight three zero nine one three one three eight four one one zero. Can you spell words correctly? It's really words that have double C, double A, double N, double L, and the like. So feel free, hit me up, call me. 0701800173091313841110. Can you spell words correctly? It's a spelling bee segment here on Spotlight, and we have about six minutes to go, and we'll revert to our interview. We'll go back to our interview. So can you spell words? You want to win airtime on the show? Feel free to call me up. 0701800173. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the show. What's your name? Your name is? Bolaji. Where are you calling me from? Bolaji from Yaba. All right. Bolaji, are you ready to spell? All right. Let's do this, Bolaji. Bolaji, spell the word incidentally. Mm hmm That is correct. Spell the word threshold. That is correct. Spell the word bombastic. That is correct. Well done, Balaji. Spell the word ebullient. That is wrong, Bolaji. Ebullient is spelled E B U double L I E N T. But you're still a winner, Bolaji. Can I have the last four digits of your phone number? Nine two. Nine two. Double six. Double three. Okay. Thanks for calling, Bolaji. Please send your full number via WhatsApp to zero eight one double three zero three eight seven four nine. Okay. All right, thank you so much for calling, Balaji. Okay, can you spell words? Do you want to win like Balaji? Can you spell words correctly? 0701800173091313841110. Those are the numbers to call to be part of the show this morning. If you want to be part of the spelling bee segment, you want to win airtime, you want to spell and win. 0701800173091313841110. Three one 
384110. All you have to do is call in and I'll give you some words to spell. If you spell three correctly, you win airtime. If you spell the five words correctly as well, you get to win airtime on the show. 0701 It's still spelling the segment here on Spotlight and the phone numbers. The phone lines are still open. 0701801783091 Can you spell words correctly? Can you spell those words correctly? Feel free to call me. It's spelling the here on Spotlight. 0701801783091 Can you spell words correctly without missing an alphabet? Yeah? Call me up and let's do this. You, you know, call me up, spell my words, and you get a time. As simple as that. It's not hard. Zero seven zero one eight zero zero one seven eight three zero nine one three one three eight four one one zero. Can you spell words correctly? Feel free to call me, and I'll be here to give you the words. Just call me. Tell me your name, your location, and I'll give you the words to spell. Your ability to spell them correctly qualifies you to win a time. Or rather, you get to win a time. Spell three words, you win airtime. Spell five words, you win a bigger amount of airtime. 7 To spell and be here on Spotlight on Yabba Tech Radio 89.3. Can you spell correctly? Can you spell words without missing an alphabet? Call me up and your ability to spell three correctly qualifies you to win a time. You get to win a time on the show. Just spell three words correctly and you win a time. We already have two winners. We have Kayade and Bology. Kayade was able to spell four words correctly and Bology spelled three words correctly so they will get their airtime as soon as i leave here you know so you also can win airtime on the show by calling in to spell words correctly zero seven zero one eight zero zero one seven eight three zero nine one three one three eight four one one zero calling tell me your name your location and um, spell the words just spell them correctly and you win airtime on the show we have about a minute to go on this segment so just be my last caller zero seven zero one eight zero zero one seven eight three Zero nine one three one three eight four one one zero. We still have our architect in the studio. So immediately after the segment to we'll go back to our interviews. So call me up zero seven zero one eight zero zero one seven eight three zero nine one three one three eight four one one zero. of an idea lies in the usage. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Tune in to Spotlight on Yabatech Radio, 89.3 FM, every Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. as we discuss various businesses that started up as just simple ideas. Spotlight is brought to you by Young and Seven. Okay. Oh, for the second phase. Yeah. 
That's not the that's not the goal. <laughs> Yeah, sure. You're welcome back. It's the spotlight on Yabba Tech Radio, 89.3 FM. We still have our architect here in the studio, and the topic is understanding the business of architecture. We've been talking to him. It's overkilled him of those chop chop houses we have in Lagos, <laughs> but he said he's not the one. <laughs> You know, so the phone lines are open for those who wanted to call earlier to ask questions. You know, you can call in and ask your questions. 0701800173 Hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Hi, good morning. My name is Nabila. Nabila. Where are you calling me from? I'm calling you from Alright, do you have a question for my guest? Yeah, I do. I do. Alright, go ahead. Go ahead. Hi, Nabila. Thank you for calling. Thank you'll you take very a question much. now. Yeah. Well, um, to be very honest, I, I actually intend to um, return to the University of Lagos to mm. speak to um, the upcoming architects. And I mean, not just even this whole mindset thing, but to also let them know the reality of what they will have to face in the profession. Mm -hmm. So, um, like she said, you really can't um, change adults, but you can inform them and mm. it's left to them to take the decision on whether they're going to go right or left yeah. or right or wrong mm -hmm. right <coughs> excuse me so um uh, i believe it has to be somehow um imbibing us from the lowest level possible to let people know the 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 real need for values you know keeping to time being diligent all of that um and we all have our own parts to play this is not even just for architecture only. Mm -hmm. It's generally it's in, in Nigeria. Yeah. Generally. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of us, um, when I say us, I'm talking about Nigerians because we are also Nigerians. So um, people just blame the government, blame the government. The mm -hmm. government sometimes is actually us. Me and you. Mm -hmm. Do the right things. People would realize that this is the right way to do things and would follow suit. So, yeah. My own personal plan is to go back to you know, like where I finished from, mm -hmm. to actually speak to um, maybe yeah, students, yeah, actually students from year one, year two, you know, let them know the realities and also let them know that you need to put in your all in whatever you do. Okay. It's all or nothing. Okay, so now let's go back to students who are studying mm -hmm. architecture at the moment. Yeah. Aside the degree mm -hmm. that you get mm -hmm. after school, are there other certifications that they need to have to become proper Architects. Oh yes, you have to register with the Architects Registration Council of Nigeria to become an architect. To call yourself an architect in Nigeria, you need mm -hmm. to be registered with the Architects Registration Council of Nigeria. So to be very honest, um, a lot of people that call themselves architects because they finished from schools of architecture are mm -hmm. not architects. Architect. 
if you don't belong to if that you are group. not registered not just belong you need to be registered because there's a process mm. you write the exams you take the interview all of that you have it's to write and you like a professional it is a professional body. it is a professional body mm. it is architecture is a serious very very serious profession mm. so um you would get a, a practice seal and a license to practice you renew your license every year Mm. So it's not just because you finished, you've done your masters. I'm now an architect. No, you're a quack. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what it really is. You need to be registered. No, but it's a harsh no, reality. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's real. It's real. You have to you have to be a member of the Architects Registration Council of Nigeria mm. and a practicing. Um, you have to get your seal and um, take the exam. All of that to become an architect. An architect to even call yourself an architect. Mm. If you're just a student of architecture and call yourself an architect, that's that's for you. So aside the things that you've mentioned, mm -hmm. if I want to, if I've, you know, I, I have a degree in architecture, mm -hmm. I've registered with the body, mm -hmm. can I now start my own architecture firm, or are there other license licenses I need to get? Okay, it's um, it's a uh, how do I address this now? Okay, so there are two ways. As an architect, you can actually just be an architect on your own mm -hmm. without your own firm. Okay. If you are a registered architect mm -hmm. and you can practice. Now, if you don't have an architectural firm, you will still go to Acon to register your firm mm. as an architectural firm. So what that means is um, you don't necessarily have to be under a firm. If you are a registered architect, you can practice on your, your own, own. Okay. and deliver your drawings, your services, mm -hmm. all of that mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you are you are a registered architect. Okay. Yeah. So now, you, you've done this for seven years. Yeah. Do you consider architecture a profitable and fulfilling career path? I, I would like to speak for myself yeah, and say like yes. No, <laughs> yeah. because there's some people, some people have different views on these mm, things. Uh, you, like personally, like yes, yes, mm. and I'm not, I'm not quitting architecture yet or anytime yeah, soon. I, I didn't say you should quit. No, no, no. I mean, if it wasn't profitable, <laughs> I'll consider quitting. Quit. I mean, the truth is, um, architecture is um, a profession, but it's also a business. Mm. You need to do things as a businessman. So if it wasn't profitable, I would. I would I would back out. Okay, so finally, what would you say to that young man in Unilag or Yabatek or, mm -hmm. or Lasso or mm -hmm. that young lady who mm -hmm. is still thinking, should I go ahead with this architecture thing? Mm -hmm. Should I or should I not go ahead with this thing? What would you say to them? Um, I would say you should go on with it. Um, the key things for me is just um, your diligence, your dedication, and being reliable. I mean, those are even the keywords for. Um, Elag Designs as a company because mm. those are things that I don't joke with. They are core values. Mm. You know, you know that you have to be, your your integrity needs to be on the line. You just don't go into a job saying, let me just do this thing and walk away. No, you know that your name is at stake. If you don't have your name on the line, mm. you rather I'd rather not do it. Do you understand? Like putting your all, so you know that you're putting in your best. And yeah, people that know value mm. can see value and they will pay for the value that okay. you give. Another one before we go. Yeah. What are the challenges that are peculiar to this type of job? Hmm. What are those challenges that you that are peculiar to being an architect? Okay, I will use Lagos as a as a case study. Lagos are so far to this. Right? Yeah, because it is what it is. <laughs> anyway, they drag us in. in yeah, <laughs> they drag us every day. I would say the major challenge we have mm. is um, the industry being saturated by non-professionals, mm. which will still be me dragging developers anyways, mm. because mm. Um, developers are. A businessmen they're looking for how to maximize their profits mm -hmm. so some in most cases a lot of them don't offer value mm -hmm. they are they are about their pockets mm -hmm. that's what it is so yeah okay that's thank my you take. so much for coming on the show thank today. you so much I comfort had a good time talking to you same here same here same here this could be this interesting to talk about <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, so you made it a lot easier for yeah, me thank, thank you very you. much i really so appreciate much for coming on the show today and to our listeners at home i hope you had fun and you learned a thing or two from our interview even if you're not an architect but you know who to blame now for all of the issues that we see that we have especially when you're holding that record me and look at those houses and you're like ah why are these houses so choked together? You know who to hold right now, right? Okay, so thank you so much for tuning into this. So shout out to Kai Di Ambalaji. You get your airtime as soon as I leave here. So do have a beautiful and a beautiful rest of the day. From Comfort, I am saying bye and have a great week. Yeah, bye. <laughs> so we're off air now, right? Yes, we're off air. <laughs> there you go. I'm getting in my life. That's Comfort. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. I'm out. Let's go and take pictures Oh, sure. Where is that phone? Oh, jeez. I don't know.
All right, guys, thank you.